Hello, hello everybody, it's your boy Prof Trough and we're back again with another video. This is Theater Zeus, How Cats Broke the Game. Let's go y'all, let's enjoy this. Yeah, I bet on the, yep, I was, I was gonna say that, on the left dude. Whooped his ass though, Jesus. This game's tier list can seem pretty Ooh. set in stone sometimes. But in reality, major shifts in the meta can happen extremely quickly. Brother, scared of when new resource hotspots. And I mean, black bears are known to be afraid, and even though they could whoop your ass. Builds which are well adapted to capitalize on these flashpoints can see dramatic ascensions on the tier list. Bro. One such event occurred when humans unlocked the food storage ability. True. This greatly improved the humans' survivability by mm. giving them a consistent source of XP even during harsh winters. Is that homie eating raw meat? Okay. Or famines. That Maybe is, it's salted. if they could defend their stockpiles. These stashes were incredibly valuable and could easily support Robin. entire colonies of rats God. and sparrows God. if improperly guarded. And Ross trying to bring back the Black Death? What the While hell? These Neolithic humans did have some techniques they could use to try and protect their precious grain on their own. Ultimately, their Wait, saving grace. I missed some that. Techniques they could use to try. Neolithic people stored grain in clay pots, baskets, and pits dug deep in the ground. I wonder how much that preserved that for. Protect their precious grain on their own. Ultimately, their saving grace came in the form of a previously low-tier predator build that was barely scraping by in the North African savanna. The wild cat. Cats. A build which once domestic. That's the desert cat, or I don't remember what they were called, but they were extremely cute. And small. It would go on to become one of the most oppressive, overpowered predators Damn. in the current meta. But what is it about the house cat that makes it such a dominant threat? And how was Come it on, that black the wild bears. cat became better suited at taking Pathetic. advantage of pest infestations than other builds? To really explain the success of the house cat, we need to go way back and start our story just after the Miocene Balance Patch. Miocene. This update granted mammals access to a new ability called Carnassal Teeth, a side grade of the den. By the way, something that if you didn't know, I'ma let you know. Big cats cheat. Like they actually cheat. They have these bodies where they make muscle automatically. We don't got that shit. In order for us to make muscle, we gotta train. These motherfuckers just grow up and they become like Arnold without the weird last name. Like. Why do we not have that? Huh? Human evolution? Why? Dumbass. Uh -huh. Competition skill tree, which allows users to gain bonus XP from carcasses and Big brain, horses. small biceps. This may seem like a minor thing, but it completely changed up the metagame. Damn. And made hyper carnivorous builds a lot more viable. And that's probably a big mammoth, but. archetype called the Carnivoran, a group which includes many of the most Ostar. popular predator builds in the current meta. Carnivorans are divided into two factions, Caniforms and Feliforms. Caniforms, Caniforms are more generalist in nature and invest a lot into the olfaction skill tree, letting them track the sense of whatever they need. Be it scavengeable carrion, prey, oh, that's a cute fruit, dog. honey, water, or teammates from a great distance. They also tend or ass. Yeah, they can smell ass pretty well. And to have a lot of stamina, allowing them to run for long distances without tiring. Aww. Feliforms, on the other hand, doubled down on the carnivoran archetype's original strategy. They specced into even more abilities meant to crank up the efficiency of the hyper carnivore game plan. That's a wild. The ability Tongue Papillae allows felids to extract even more value from fresh kills. Instead huh? of investing heavily into scent based sensory power, feliforms <laughs> tend to focus more on their hearing and eyesight abilities. This doesn't help them scavenge since things like carcasses and berries don't make sound, but it does make them incredibly good at detecting hidden prey. Also, in keeping with the carnivoran's first major advancement, feliforms also focus a lot. Fun fact, tiger's canines can measure nearly four inches in length. Oh, I got something four inches, but nobody's measuring that. A lot more heavily on specialized dentition, optimizing their bite attacks to deal massive puncture damage. And more <laughs> Why you do that though? Prey, so the user can deal bonus damage yeah. with their claws. Eats ass. Throw in a few more ambush-focused abilities like retractable claws and camouflage fur patterns, and you've arrived at the modern Felid, easily one of the most successful Bro. stealth assassin builds the game has ever seen. In fact, during the Ice Age, Croc, really? You let that happen, brother? Expansion. Felids were such a dominant threat that many other predator Ooh. builds had trouble competing with them at all. In the current Damn. meta, cats remain incredibly dominant in virtually Everywhere. every major terrestrial server. Basically every cat, including the ones I like to throw shade at, is a threat. Not just <laughs> to those of similar weight class, but even to builds that vastly outweigh them. 
Although their power stat tends to be fairly modest among Carnivorans, through efficient use of critical hits, a skilled Felid player can take down just about anything. Yeah, the spine is gone. The majority of the Felid player base was off rampaging through the upper weight class. That's a Jaguar. The offshoot of the faction opted to forego larger size and... That's, that is a weird cat. Kind of cute though. And instead chose to spec into a few new abilities meant to capitalize on exploiting the weaknesses commonly found in the lower weight classes. So let's finally start unpacking Aww. what makes the house cat so overpowered. We'll begin with a quick look at the cat's stats. Okay. We've got to build with upper mid-level intelligence, low, low defense, defense. Stats, makes sense. Damage, above average stealth, high mobility, and excellent perception. Pretty smart. Right off the bat, Something that might jump out at you is, well, the fact that nothing jumps out at you. Cats are supposedly some of the most broken predators of all time, and yet none of their stats seems all that busted on their own. Top tier they don't? Almost everything was a buff, your brother? Your builds it's tend to have crazy. At least one stat that is so high it completely invalidates the strategies of other players. But no, cats. Late term abortion right there. Cats aren't able to use tools, they don't have a bone crushing or venomous bite, they can't change Damn. colors, Wait. they can't tank attacks for. Cats, some of the big cats like tigers and lions have insane uh, bite strength, no? Days, Come on, like, echolocate and doesn't Jaguar have like the biggest one that's not even that big? And it's actually in cra crazy bite strength. So on. So no obvious answer here. Aww. Next, let's and check cuteness. out their unique abilities. Yeah. We talked about a few already, including the abilities that buff the XP rates from meat sources. Okay. These should not be understood. How does that work exactly? How does that buff it? I mean, you're still eating the whole thing. Do they get more of it? I don't get this one. Stated, as without them, you can pretty much entirely write off the viability of this build. Cats and all other mammals have the warm-blooded trait. This grants them greatly improved stamina regen rates, greater resistance to cold damage, and a bunch of other useful perks, but at the cost of much greater upkeep requirements, meaning they need to secure kills Adorable. much more frequently than similarly sized cold-blooded builds. Ooh. Without these abilities granting the cat bonus XP from meat, it would be very difficult for them to keep up with their energy needs, even with how efficient cats are at hunting. Cats can also move extremely quietly due to their soft toe pads and retractable claws, enabling them to easily get within striking range of prey through smart use of cover and line of sight. <laughs> and now what? He just stopped? By the way, that's a fat cat. Look at how small its head is. All types of cat, large and small, have those abilities. Mm -hmm. How about something more unique to house cats? Civilization. For that, let's look at their primary perception-based ability, slitted pupils. This ability grants house cats extremely precise depth perception, greater than all <laughs> other feelers. This allows them to perfectly judge the optimal pouncing distance, massively increasing their odds of landing an immediate critical hit and incapacitating Baby. their target before they a chance to respond. So even though the house cat's base damage isn't broken... What is that thing? Oh, that's the like dog thing, but like bad. Uh, fuck, I forgot what it's called. They have them a lot in America. Y'all know what in I mean. Itself, like wild dog when thing. When house cat goes on the offensive, it can certainly look that way. This strategy is what has led to the complete collapse of several different player bases in the amphibian, reptile, no, bird, and mammal factions, as it truly is that oppressive. Now, Aye. while we were first looking at the cat's base, we'd had bit like three in his mouth. Hey, stats. Adorable. One thing you might have assumed right away was that the cat's lower defensive stats are its main weakness, and that cats function as a sort of glass cannon, with very little counterplay options when attacked. You might also assume that given the cat's high mobility, their primary defensive strategy is simply to run away when they feel threatened. Mm. And while their top speed is often enough to escape danger when needed, instead, cats employ their mobility stat defensively in a different way. This is where one of the most shockingly effective aspects of the house cat manifests. House Bravery? cats use their incredible agility to stand Damn. their ground. Damn! Agility and quick reflexes Yo. are usually used to dodge attacks, <laughs> but cats instead actually use their reflexes to deflect them. Because their incredible depth perception grants them such high accuracy on their attacks, they can use their claw swipe attack to actually block incoming strikes. Oh. I remember seeing this video. So this cat had like, uh, it was a mother and it was protecting its children, I think, in this video. This is surprisingly consistent and works a lot more snake. attacks than you might think. Now, obviously, this is a high skill, high Another black strategy. bear. What? Missing Yo, a parry. What's up with black bears getting bullied in this video? Come on, black bears. Can result in cool. serious damage. But if you get good enough at this, you can fox. ward off attacks from just about anything. And yeah. potentially even open up that's what the fox for counter attacks. Put all this together and you come to understand what a house cat build truly is. A house cat is what you get when you fuse the deadliness of a snake with the energy of a mammal. 
but why does this playstyle make for such a good partnership with human players? Compared to dogs, they seem like they'd be much less useful party members. Humans broke the game and became the top tier build by using coordinated- I mean, there is dogs, like small dogs that were meant as rodent killers as well. Like that long one that's kind of like a sausage. I'm pretty sure those were made so they can kill like rodents. Team strategies so, and tools you know. in order to utterly trivialize their matchup versus large mammals. Dogs easily slot right into this game plan as they can help track and chase down large prey and also sniff out any potential ambush predators that could disrupt mm. and punish this strategy. When a successful kill is made, dogs and humans naturally split the reward and both benefit. Oh, that's dogs a good boy. Also great defensively as they can keep watch and camp and alert more bears. Approaching enemies. By the way, Cats are first off, where do you live where two brown bears can walk inside of your property? Okay, because that is not a place I want to live at. <laughs> brown bears are scary. They're not like black bears. Black bears are scary, but they don't do shit. Brown bears are scary and they will fuck you up. Generally pretty useless in this regard. They don't have anywhere near the endurance Aww. required to chase down prey over long distances. Can't square off head to head with Ooh. those builds anyway, and oh, it's a coyote. Really reliable for early coyote. enemy alerts. The kills the cat makes can't realistically be shared with humans either. It wasn't mm. until humanity unlocked the agriculture ability that the player base hey. began to notice. A By the way, if your cat, home cat, loves you enough, I think it loves you enough. Sometimes when they kill stuff, they'll bring them to you. I've had cats do that to me, and it's it's disgusting because they bring like disgusting dead things to you. But at the same time, it's kind of cute. So, you know, there is that. They didn't need to care about before. Vulnerabilities that dogs couldn't really help with. When operating off of a hunter-gatherer strategy, humans could basically ignore all builds in the low weight class. Mm, true. Rats and birds were no threat to humans and also not worth the effort to take down. Yes, so it makes bro. sense for them to just focus on larger quarries. However, when the focus shifts to farming and food storage, those same builds humans were ignoring before suddenly became one of their biggest threats. Having a granary raided and its food reserves destroyed could easily wipe out an entire human settlement. So figuring out proper security for these storage sites was critical. <laughs> Dogs simply are not effective enough at stopping pest infestations to fill that role. Oh, well, that's kind of cute. Climb or fit into small spaces and aren't stealthy enough to catch the trickier pests. Cats, on the other hand, are truly excellent at this task and come with <laughs> other benefits as well. The main one being that they require very little upkeep. Although they are social builds, they hunt alone, so they don't require any direction or attention from their human party members in order Fair to enough. accomplish their task. Since humans don't have any need for rat or bird carcasses, the fact that cats don't usually share their kills is actually a benefit rather than a drama. Damn, the only crazy thing hands. Really require from humans is to share in the shelters they construct. In the wilderness, cats typically use burrows, hollow stumps, or caves as their home bases. <laughs> but these are vulnerable to attacks. Human settlements are significantly safer. Speaking of safety, even though cats are extremely lethal hunters, they pose very little danger to humans. Okay, I have a question for anybody that knows. What's up with these cats? They have like the small... Is this like a deformity or something? Because I've seen a lot of these in like Asian places. They have these cats. They have like... like their feet are not fully set in or... I don't know what it is. Like that cat is useless. That's not a cat. That's like a, a fluffy pillow. It's still cute, but it can't jump. It can't hunt. It can't do anything. Like... A rat would probably beat the shit out of that thing. It's cute though. This is a huge advantage over but snakes, which theoretically could allow with humans you know? to serve the same purpose, but in Can practice they? are far too dangerous to risk keeping around. The fact that cats are warm-blooded and therefore need to eat more frequently than snakes is also Fun a fact. Snakes can go weeks without eating. That's crazy. Rather than a drawback for humans, since it means they need to stay on task and keep the guard up. So, while it Damn. is common to see players debate which build makes for the better addition to a human player's party, I mean, the correct... Listen, when we're talking about, like, farm life, you kind of need both, right? Because cats will take care of little things, and if you have, like, uh, what is it called? Like, animals, big animals, like sheep and stuff like that, you need dogs to, you know, take care of the bigger things, like wolves and stuff, like, scare them away, stuff like that. So, I mean, you kind of want both of them. The answer is actually both. Hey. Dogs are a huge help in the large creature matchup. Traitor. Cats cover your weaknesses in the Traitor. small creature matchups. Having both in your party oh, covers all of your weaknesses and enables adorable. human settlements to use a hybrid play style of both hunting and farming. So if you're a human main trying to construct mm. the most optimal party comp, the only real question is how you'll keep the dog and cat players oh. from fighting each other. 
Now, knowing which traits and abilities to invest in can be a difficult choice. Luckily for you, I've partnered with the game Cell to Singularity to provide you the perfect training simulation. What simulation. the hell? Cell to Singularity is a scientifically accurate, non-fiction, idle clicker game. That looks like sport. You begin as a single cell and have to unlock traits to evolve your biology. That sounds exactly like sport. And invent new technology in order to conquer the universe and reach the ultimate city. That sounds exactly like sport. It does not look like sport, though. It looks... I mean, I, I won't say it because it's not good, but hey, I hope y'all enjoy this. Let me know what y'all think. Cats or dogs? Personally, I prefer dogs, but dogs take more upkeep, so I kind of like cats because I'm lazy, you know, but dogs are better in every way. I gotta be honest with you. Anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed this. Check out Tears and I'll see y'all next time. Okay, everybody. Bye-bye. Have a nice day.